Austin Kennedy played a major role of reestablishing high expectations as the quarterback of your Windsor Lancers. And now that his time under center is over, he joins us today to talk about his past, his present, and his future. Austin, so great to see you, you and thanks for joining us this afternoon on the Two Man Advantage podcast. Glad to be here. So, Austin, you said at the beginning of the season that you were more interested in coming to a program where you could build the wall brick by brick instead of protecting something that had already been built. So if you could tell me, now that your uh, career is over, looking back at it, what was your fondest memory and how do you think, uh, what, what sort of a shape do you think you left the program in? That's a tough question. Um, I think that overall uh, it's a good shape. It's a forward-moving shape that uh, myself and, and uh, the guys who have been playing with me for the past five years are, are leaving the program. I don't think we accomplished everything we wanted to accomplish, but we definitely took steps in the right direction. And I think we, uh, we maintained those steps over you know, the, the four years after that, that first uh, playoff miss that we had in my first year. Uh, for a fondest memory, I don't know if I have per se one, um, you know, I just, every game, uh, all the workouts with the guys, hanging out with everybody, uh, it's kind of like a conglomerate of everything put together, uh, combined that really, you know, is something that you're never going to forget. Now, uh, you've had the uh, playoffs four years, on four straight years while you were leading the team, and can you just talk to me about the importance for you, to, for you in particular on raising expectations for the entire program and then maintaining them. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the OUA is a very tough league. There's 11 teams and only six make it into playoffs, so, uh, you know, almost only half of them. Um, and uh, coming in, that was kind of few and far between our playoff appearances. So that was obviously one thing that we really wanted to, uh, to accomplish and establish a, a team that makes it to the playoffs, you know, year in and year out. Uh, as the last four years, that's that's been accomplished. Um, so really, the the true testament to I think our leadership and uh, what we brought to the program will be seen in the years going forward. Uh, we're not there anymore, uh, and the guys we worked with, you know, the younger guys, they kind of take it over. And tell me, I know that one of your goals entering the season was winning uh, the Yates Cup. Cup coming into your final year, even though you didn't accomplish that goal. Just talk to me about building a foundation for that that to happen in the future. Yeah, definitely, it's it's unfortunate, obviously, that we didn't accomplish that, and that's something we all would have, um, you know, really liked to do. And uh, unfortunately, it's something we're not going to have the opportunity to do again. But just like you said, if uh, if we can build a foundation for five eight cups, eight cups in the future, as opposed to just winning one ourselves, I think we'd all, you know, make that sacrifice for uh, for the program in the future. Uh, and that's, you know, hopefully, that, I think that's something that's going to happen and these playoff appearances will continue and, uh, you know, more and more wins will pile up until finally kind of crack that barrier and get that Yates Cup. Now, for you in particular, when you injured your knee against Toronto, you had said that you had to change your uh, style of play. So how did your injury against Toronto affect your style of play and the things that you felt you could accomplish? Uh, it it uh, really changes the way you play. Just like you said, you know, you, you're not as mobile. Um, even your, your throwing motion changes a little bit because you don't have as much power. That was my, my back legs, my plant foot. Um, you have to kind of mentally think about it. It's not something that you just do subconsciously where you just kind of adjust the way you play. You have to really think every play, okay, I can't, uh, I can't do this, I can't do that. You've got to stay in the pocket. I've got to take that extra second to, to read the defense. I can't panic too quickly. Um, so it's something that I had to adapt to. Um, in the end, I think it brought some positives and some negatives uh, because it, it kind of trains you to, uh, to adapt that style, which is a little bit more of a true quarterback style, I guess you could say, where uh, you're patient, you're staying in the pocket, you're not moving around too much. So uh, obviously it would have been nice to not be injured, um, but uh, you, know, you kind of got to roll with the punches and adapt to what, what happens to you. And tell me, you've made it no secret that you have a special relationship with head coach uh, Joe DeMore. So tell me, how difficult 
is it for you to leave that relationship on the field? And can you just describe the dynamics of the rela sure. relationship between you two? Yeah, we've been together for uh, seven years. Cause he was the OC at uh, the Essex Ravens when I played there in my, my final two uh, senior seasons. And then obviously he was coaching at the university for my entire five-year career. So we've been together for a while. You know, we've had ups and downs. Um, I would definitely say more ups than downs. Uh, you know, there'd only be one of those seven seasons that we didn't make playoffs. We won a championship with the Ravens together. Um, and, you know, our relationship is, I think, built a lot on trust. Um, you know, he, he trusts me a lot. Uh, well, he did trust me, I should say, in, in uh, my understanding of, of the game and our team and the offense and those types of things. And, we, you know, we played off of each other and making play calling decisions and strategizing and those things. So, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that type of relationship has to come to uh, to an end from the player coach perspective, but you never know in the future there could be a, a coach to coach type of connection. And tell me, how did your lessons you learned on the field, how are those lessons you learned playing for winter effective for the rest of your life? Football is a tough game. Um, as with any sport, you're going to lose, um, you know, more than likely at the end of the day, you're going to lose in certain ways more than you win. Um, so you might have a winning record, but only one team at the end of the year is going to be the champion, and the, the remaining ten teams in the league are, are going to you know end their season on a loss. So you have to deal with a lot of uh, I guess frustration. Uh, you know a lot of people say that the hardest thing to do uh, in baseball is bat because you have to get used to only hitting the ball you know two to three times out of every ten at bats. So uh, it's it's tough to learn how to deal with disappointment, uh, but it makes you a lot tougher. And it kind of builds your work ethic because you're trying to, uh, you know, erase those for the for the next year, the next season, the next game. And uh, just like I said, without that disappointment and those constant kind of challenges, you don't challenge yourself to get better and uh, overcome those obstacles. And you've said in the past that you don't believe that uh, Canadian quarterbacks are on the same uh, platform as their American counterparts. So how do you think, or what steps do uh, I need to be t uh, taken to uh, close that gap. I think the quarterback position is unlike any other. Uh, there's, you know, if you're playing kind of a line position or a, uh, a skill position other than quarterback, uh, you can learn a lot of things a lot more quickly, um, and it's not as predicated on your, your mental understanding of the game. Obviously, those, those are still very important factors, and they will make players better. Um, but I think they pale in comparison to the, the mental training that is required to be a successful quarterback, especially at a pro level. So for uh, Canadian and American quarterbacks, I think the biggest difference is uh, the training that Americans get at young ages. So a lot of Americans, you know, they basically come out of the womb with a football and they're taught how to uh, understand the game and what to do and they're training uh, from a very, very young age. So by the time, you know, we're both in high school, they're already, you know, years ahead of us per se. And it's very difficult to make that gap up. Um, you know, they say it's, it's easiest to learn a language when you're a baby. Uh, it's easiest to kind of build those skills and ingrain them in your mind when you're really young. Uh, so I think a lot of Americans, when they get to high school, they get to college, uh, these things are kind of like a second language to them. It's not just something they do in their spare time. Uh, and that's extremely difficult to, for us to make up as Canadians because we didn't have that exposure when we were young. And in terms of your individual language, Legacy at Windsor, if you had to describe that, how would you uh, characterize that? Well, I would say the thing I'm most proud of is uh, the four playoff appearances, you know, considering uh, that didn't happen for a long time. And, and like I said, the, the playoff appearances that we had were very few and far between. So uh, I don't think that's an individual you know, accomplishment by any means. Um, I think it was due largely to the, uh, the group of guys I graduated with, you know, Evan and Dylan and, and Josh Burns and everyone. Um, and, you know, it was kind of a team effort and just kind of the right group of guys came together at the right time, uh, just kind of like a twist of fate. And I think that really contributed to, to uh, our success. Um, and as I said before, uh, you know, the true testament to that will be if those playoffs continue. Uh, and, you know, our kind of leadership abilities and our, our roles with some of the younger guys in the team uh, pan out and really prove to be uh, beneficial in the future. And finally, tell me, what's next uh, for you individually in terms of life goals and things that you would like to achieve? I know that you have aspirations to enter uh, the business world. Yeah, I'm finishing up my BCom degree at the university, obviously, so uh, in the future I'd like to get an MBA.
uh, maybe even a law degree at the same time. Uh, so quite a bit of school left in my future. I wish I could be playing football while I was doing that, but uh, unfortunately that's all done. Um, aside from that, from a, I guess from a football perspective, you know, I'd obviously love to get involved in, uh, in coaching again, and I'm sure that's something that I will, that I will begin to explore um, you know, once things kind of settle down in the educational world. Well, we uh, appreciate your time this afternoon, and thank you uh, for joining us on the Two Man Advantage podcast, and we certainly wish you the best of luck in uh, your future. My pleasure. Anytime, big man.